All right, so in this last part of this unit, I wanted to talk to you about motion and in particular free fall motion, okay? Which, when we say free fall, what we're talking about is just something that is falling, okay? There's no other forces acting on it except for gravity pulling it down. That's it, okay? Yes, there's some air resistance, but we're pretty much going to say that it's negligible for now, meaning we don't really consider it because we're just working in very small times, very small areas. So we're not talking about jumping out of a plane quite yet and reaching terminal velocity. That's a discussion for another day, okay? So to help guide us along, I want to talk about the, um, the cartoon physics that we had uh, that you already read or maybe I assigned to read after this. Anyway, so let's talk about this, okay? First of all, we have three kinds of motion that we talked about. One is if something is standing still, okay? Two is if something has a constant velocity. That's an O. And three, if something is accelerating okay so you need to be standing still you could be moving with a nice constant velocity or you could be accelerating getting faster and faster or even slowing down or possibly changing direction but let's focus on what we're talking about here when we're talking about free fall we're talking about something that is accelerating it is getting faster and faster okay now the problem was if you look at Galileo okay um, is that it was kind of hard to see that the velocity increased because it happened so quickly. So what he figured out is that he could actually put it, put a ball, instead of dropping a ball, he could put it on the inclined plane. In other words, a board that's tilted, and it would increase the speed. In other words, it kind of slowed down the acceleration that it had. It still kept going faster and faster, but it slowed down that acceleration. Okay. And he did this many, 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 many times. He rolled things down. In fact, he used his own pulse as a clock, which is quite impressive. Um, and so the idea is that if you have a ball rolling down an inclined plane, okay, the steeper the plane, the closer it is to actual gravity's acceleration. So if you just keep tilting it, eventually it's vertical and it's not actually rolling down. So that is free fall. Right? Now the cool thing, and the very important thing, is, is that he found this formula, okay? That's one to write in your essential equation sheet, so I'm going to write it over here again, but it's d equals one-half a t squared. What he's saying is that he can calculate the distance, or in other words, how far something has moved based on just knowing the acceleration of the object, okay? And just do the math, there's a half there, don't worry about that. But just by knowing the acceleration and the time that it's been falling. So if you know the rate of acceleration and the time that something falls, you can determine how far it falls in that time. Now also a little bit of math, you have to square the time. That's important. We'll talk more about that later. Whenever you do this math, always square the time first. That's the easy way to get this done right. Okay? All right. Also, he found that objects, when they fall, they fall with a constant acceleration. That's key. The acceleration is the same. Gravity acceleration is the same on Earth, no matter where you are, for the most part. And it's always constant. It doesn't change. It doesn't... It, it's constant. Let's just keep it at that. Okay, all right, so other things he found, okay? Well, Galileo's experiments produced a surprise, okay? He dropped lots of different things, and what he figured out, and this is key, this is why I'm actually going to highlight this, all objects fall with the same acceleration regardless of mass. That's key. Now, you might be thinking, well, what about a feather and a book? Well... Okay, or how about this receipt and my checkbook? Whoop, this took a long time. But they fall with the same acceleration? That doesn't make sense, Mr. Webb. Well, this has a bit more air resistance. Now, 
if it was true that these fell with different accelerations, meaning in the absence of air, they would fall at the same rate, then if I took out the air resistance and I just dropped it, then they would fall at the same rate. Now watch. They do fall at the same rate. I don't know if you can actually get that. But the idea is that they actually fall together. They fall at the same rate because when you have the checkbook here, it blocks the receipt from actually getting the air resistance. Okay. All right. Maybe that's a little confusing. Okay. But whether you, well, let's put it this way. There was, um, when Apollo missions went up to the moon, this was awesome. They brought a feather and a hammer, actually. They brought a feather and a hammer to the moon and they dropped them. Now on the moon, there's very, 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 very little air. In other words, it's practically like having no air. So they figured, well, let's test it out. Let's drop a feather and a brick or a hammer and see if they drop at the same rate. And in fact, they did. So Galileo was right. Okay? And there's a video I'm going to have you watch about that. We could even do the experiment here on Earth. Okay. All we have to do is make a vacuum. Okay. Not a cleaner. Don't, we're not sucking up dirt. I'm talking about a vacuum where you have a big area and you suck all the air out. And then you have a brick and a feather or a hammer and a feather and you drop them at the same time. And this has been done. And the feather and the hammer actually drop at the exact same rate. They fall at the same rate because there's no air to slow down the less aerodynamic feather. Okay. So anyway, Galileo did some calculations, some other scientists did some calculations, and we now have done lots and lots of calculations, but we finally figured out this rate of acceleration. Okay? Near the surface of the Earth, all objects fall with 9.8 meters per second squared. Actually, put a negative in there. Okay, And we can write this down in our essential equation sheet. We can write, and go ahead, do this. The acceleration due to gravity, that's a sub g, it's a smaller and down low g, is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay, sometimes you'll see it as this, sometimes we'll just abbreviate it as g. So g equals 9.8, sorry, negative, 9.8 meters per second squared. You should write these down in your essential equation sheet. Pause me, do it now. Okay. All right, you've done it, now you're back. All right, so um, there's some other stuff here with Einstein. I'll, I'll, I'll let you read that. Uh, but the idea is without air resistance, this is the acceleration of an object, okay, as it's falling. All right, so. Last slide here, pretty much, okay? So let's talk about some graphs and some actual data here, okay? So let's drop this concrete block, okay? Now, we know that the motion is a constant acceleration. So we know that the motion is a constant acceleration. So already, we know that if we were to draw an acceleration in time graph, if I could actually make these look good, okay? The acceleration would be a constant amount, okay? And we'll call this negative 9.8 meters per second squared, okay? So we have a constant acceleration, okay? I guess if you really wanted to do it right, okay, you would set it up like this, and so your acceleration is here, this is your time, and if this was zero and this was 10, then negative 9.8 would be right about here, okay? And so, here, I'll even change the color a little bit. Let's change it to the color for accelerating objects, green. It would be down here, okay? If you wanna be technical about it, it would be down here. All right, so let's go back, all right? So, um, anyway, constant acceleration. Now, the velocity, changes based on acceleration, um, which is just that the velocity is the acceleration times the time, okay? We know this based on, remember acceleration is the change in velocity over time, right? If we just do our algebra and we multiply both sides by t, you get that the velocity 
or change in velocity equals a times t. Okay, same thing. All right, so, but in this case, it's g because the acceleration that we're talking about here is the acceleration due to gravity. Okay, so in other words, if we want to find the velocity of that block, all we do is we take the acceleration due to gravity, remember that's 9.8, and we multiply it by t. So we just take negative 9.8 times however long we've been there, however long it's been dropped. Okay? So here they actually put some data together. Okay? At time zero, the velocity is zero and the distance is zero. Half a second later, it's actually going 4.9 meters per second. One second later, it's 9.8. Two seconds is 19.6, three, 29.4, four, 39.2. So you see every one second, it goes up by 9.8. They're not using negative here, that's just the direction. Here, from 9.8 19.6, that's 9.8 meters per second increase in speed. Same thing here, same thing here, okay? So if we were to draw a velocity graph for this, the velocity graph would be increasing just like that, okay? We would be getting an increase like that because it would be going up 9.8 meters per second every second, okay? All right, now if you wanted to do it with the correct actual, you know, uh, vectors, I guess you could say, okay? Um, the velocity, oops, should probably do something like this, okay? If this were zero for the velocity, and this is time, the velocity would actually be going in the negative direction, be getting faster and faster in the negative direction. So we'll be going that way. But that's just a minor detail. Don't worry too much about that. Technically, it's the same slope. It's just in the opposite direction. It's going negative. Okay? All right. So sorry for my sniffles. Uh, lastly, take a look at the distance. Sorry, that's my phone. How annoying is that? Sorry. So, uh, take a look at distance. After one second, it's moved 4.9 meters. Then 19.6 the next second, then down to 44 meters away, and then down to almost 80 meters away. You see, in fact, you can see it here, the distance gets bigger and bigger each time. So if we were to draw a distance versus time graph, we would get something that looks like that, okay? Or if we wanted to do it with the direction perfect, okay? The distance would start, well, let's say actually this would be zero, okay? It would actually start here and it would start getting further and further away, just like that. Same thing, it's a curve, okay? But it's just going in the opposite direction, all right? And remember the equation that we wrote in our essential equation sheet was that d equals one half a t squared. That is what governs this graph. Here, it's velocity equals a times t, or really velocity equals the acceleration due to gravity. That's for these guys. And acceleration, well, it's just 9.8 because it's constant really negative 9.8, okay? So really, something in free fall is just something that is accelerating. That's really what you need to know. Um, and there you go. Let me know if you have any questions.